As of the time that I'm filming this, we're nearly headed into our fall season, which means that we will soon be headed into our winter season, which brings with it a lot of cold weather, snow, blizzards, everything we all love, and if you couldn't already tell I'm being completely sarcastic, I think a lot of us hate the winter season, but despite that, we're nearly about to head into it, and I think you want to know what's going to be going on. So if that's you, stay with me for today's video, because today we're going to be going over what you can expect to see weather-wise for your 2024 to 2025 United States winter season. All coming up in just a bit. Now, real quick before we get into today's video, I do want to mention that if you are feeling a little bit generous, we do now have merchandise. It should be right under this video, and we also have memberships. Now, with the memberships, you get different perks, such as shoutouts at the end of each video that I make, and you also get to have special posts and updated forecasts that others will not be able to see without a membership. So, if you are having a little extra money on the side, consider that because it definitely helps out the channel, and you get benefits that others do not, so it's awesome for you. All right, now getting right to today's forecast, we're taking a look at our temperature anomaly forecast map. And basically, if you're not familiar with this, what this shows you is whether you're likely to have above average or below average temperatures this season. So we're going to start off there to the north in that light blue region there. And as you can see, this extends from the state of Washington all the way over into portions of the Great Lakes and Midwest. And basically what this is stating is we're likely to have slightly below average temperatures for this area. Nothing too crazy there. We're not expecting really cold temperatures, more cold than normal, but we're expecting slightly below. So that's slightly cooler than your normal temperatures in a winter season. Now this is typical with La Nina and we're headed back into La Nina from El Nino. We're actually supposed to peak our La Nina activity around December or January. That's where we're going to see the most of this impact. So we're likely going to have the coldest weather around January, which is pretty typical in winter, but this year it's definitely going to be a bit more of an impact because we have the peak of that La Nina before it starts to slowly fade back towards a neutral pattern later on towards the spring. But what we're expecting here is maybe one to two degrees below average. You're not really going to walk outside and notice anything uh, just yet, but you would notice that change if you documented each temperature and compared it to other years in the past. Now, what we see for the north there is that blue region. Now, this is where we expect below average conditions. This is where you likely will notice a change in overall cooler conditions than what you normally expect in the winter season. Now, this area is typically very cold during the winter, but we are expecting some even colder conditions. We are expecting some deep Arctic movements with deep Arctic air masses heading into that area. And basically what that's informing you is that we're going to have some pretty powerful cold fronts move through, and it's going to bring a lot of that Arctic air from the north down into these areas. So definitely an area you're going to want to watch this winter because you're going to want to have the proper clothing and you're going to want to have time to prepare if any winter events come through this area. Now moving on to the south, we're taking a look at that light orange region there. And much like the light blue, this is a slight change. So we're expecting a slight change in the positive direction. We're expecting slightly warmer conditions. Now for the most part, a lot of these areas are typically warm in the winter. The further north you go, that does change towards cooler conditions. However, this season we are expecting some slightly warmer. So again, it's not like you're going to walk outside and notice too much of a change. But behind the scenes, this is definitely going to play a role into your weather. So we are expecting those slightly warmer conditions, maybe one to two degrees above average. Nothing you're going to really notice to the touch of your skin. However, we are expecting those slightly warmer conditions to take over much of this area. Now to the southwest there, we have that dark orange region. This, much like the dark blue, is going to be a bigger change. Now this is going to be a bigger change in the positive direction. We are expecting warmer conditions for this area this winter. So definitely, you know, this area is typically pretty warm during the winter, but we are expecting those warmer conditions down there for much of southeastern Arizona, southern New Mexico, and southwestern Texas. Those areas are likely going to experience pretty warm conditions this winter, at least for the most part, December, January, February. Those are the times where we're going to see those above average conditions kind of peak for this winter season. Now, moving on to our next map, we're taking a look at our precipitation anomaly forecast map. Now, this is going to tell you the changes that we likely will expect for precipitation for your winter season. Now, we're going to start off there for the Pacific Northwest. And as you can see, we have a light green region there. Now, this is going to indicate slightly above average conditions for precipitation. We are expecting an increased active polar jet to come down through those areas and likely kick up some storms through that area. So you're going to likely have some stormy conditions throughout the winter. Now, this doesn't mean it's going to rain snow every day but you will likely have frequent storms moving through there, uh, kind of being born off the Pacific and moving onto the coast over the Rocky Mountains and headed up into Montana and North Dakota. So we are likely going to see that happen, and that likely will bring some slightly increased precipitation, uh, whether it's rain, sleet, snow, any form of precipitation we're really considering as slightly above average through this region. 
Now moving over to the Great Lakes there, we have another slightly above average region. This extends for portions of the Great Lakes down into the Ohio Valley and up into the Northeast and into New England. So these areas are also expecting that slightly increased precipitation. We will likely see some trouping there, which if you don't know what that means, that means there's a dip in the jet stream and we do kind of have that upper low action where we are expecting a pretty active jet stream and a pretty active storm pattern to move through that area. So this will likely keep things pretty wet throughout the winter season for these areas and likely keep things pretty active storm-wise. Now, moving back up to the Pacific Northwest again, we do see for areas of Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and Montana, we have that dark green region. Now, this is where you can expect those above average precipitation conditions. So we likely will see some increased precipitation here, a pretty active storm pattern, and likely a lot more precipitation than you would typically expect for this area. Now, moving back over to the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes, we do see another region, the dark green region there. And we do see this is going to be above average precipitation as well. Now, throughout much of the Great Lakes, I do believe that this is going to be a pretty interesting winter storm zone. I'm not saying we're going to see a lot of blizzards and heavy winter storms, but I do believe that a lot of the big winter storms that will happen this season will happen around this area. There's a lot of moisture in that area. We do see some trouping that's likely to set up around the area and overall really good conditions for winter storm development that will be moving through this area. So do keep that in mind as we head to the winter season. Now, moving down south, we do see that yellow region there, and this extends from portions from central California up into the Great Plains, down through the southeast, and over into portions of the mid-Atlantic. Now, this is where you can likely expect some slightly decreased precipitation conditions. Now, we are seeing an elevated jet stream. Again, when we were in El Nino, we saw a subtropical jet stream and a pretty active one at that. Now, that carries moisture through these areas and keeps them pretty wet. But since we're heading back into La Nina, we're going to see a bit of a switch up. That subtropical jet stream is no longer going to be as active, and we will likely see a dampering in that, and the elevated elevated polar jet stream is now going to be pushed a little bit more northward now where we don't see as active of a jet stream through the southern United States and what that's going to do is that's going to keep things more wet to the north and rather dry to the south. Now, we only see an increased version of this as we move to the orange region. This area is likely going to be a bit more dry as well. Now, we are expecting below average conditions for these areas anywhere from Southern California, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, Louisiana, Southern Mississippi, Southern Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Florida. All those areas are expecting those drier conditions. I am expecting a pretty less active storm pattern for these areas. As we progress towards spring, I do think things will pick back up for these areas. But so far this winter, I do think we're going to keep things a little more drier rather than wet. Now on our next map, we're taking a look at our snowfall anomaly forecast map. And this is going to tell you whether you're likely to have above average snowfall or below average snowfall. Now, starting off here to the southwest, we do see an area here that typically does see snowfall more in the elevated areas during the winter. We do see this yellow region here for much of eastern California, Nevada, all the way over to Oklahoma and Kansas. Now, these areas are likely to experience a slightly decreased snowfall this season, and here's why. We will likely see a bit warmer conditions for this area overall, and we will likely see some slightly drier conditions overall. Now, couple those two together, and it's no doubt that we will likely see some decreased snowfall. Those conditions don't really do well for snowfall development, and these areas will likely see some overall decreased patterns for snowfall. Now, moving over here to the Northeast and New England over there for Massachusetts, New York, New Jersey, all the way up in the Maine, we do see slightly decreased snowfall here as well. Now this is going to be due to slightly warmer conditions that are likely to move over to this area. We do see the Atlantic Ocean is particularly warm right now and I do believe it's going to continue on into this winter. That's likely going to prohibit any areas of snowfall for the coastal areas. Um, that doesn't mean that you're not going to see any snowfall this season but I do believe that some slightly decreased snowfall is definitely expected for this season um, especially if the storm tracks are going to be a little more northward up in the northern Maine in those areas. That doesn't mean you won't see anything in these areas but that does mean that a bit more of the development is going to be more northward rather than over here for the coastal areas for snowfall. Now moving up here to the Pacific Northwest, we do see that light blue region and that is for slightly above average conditions for snowfall. Now we did see that we are expecting some slightly cooler conditions and some slightly more wet conditions overall. So couple those two together and we do have slightly increased snowfall. We also see this over here for the Great Lakes. We do see another area for slightly increased snowfall. Now these areas are pretty active during the winter season for a lot of snowfall. So I'm not really expecting anything too crazy there, but I am expecting a slight increase on top of that for these areas. Now moving back up to the Pacific Northwest, we do see that dark blue region 
Now, this is going to be where you're starting to expect that above average snowfall. I am expecting a bit more increased snowfall, a lot more cooler conditions, and a lot more wet conditions. Those two combined create more snowfall, and I do believe we're going to see a pretty active winter area up there for portions of Washington, northern Idaho, and northwestern Montana. Now, around the areas you'll notice around the Great Lakes, we have particular regions that typically get Great Lakes snowfall. And the reason I have these isolated areas under above average snowfall is because these Great Lakes have been baking here. We have been in above average temperatures all summer long for the most part for this area and when we couple those below average temperatures that are expected to move through this area along with the above average water temperatures that's going to create some pretty messy scenarios for lake effect snowfall and here's why when we have colder air temperature moving over the warmer great lakes that kicks up a convective process that starts to create great lake snowfall that's how it happens every season now amplify these conditions with warmer waters and colder air we're likely going to see increased lake effect snowfall overall and that's likely going to put some above average conditions for these areas on top of the winter storms that are expected to move through through this season all right now moving on to our final map here this is usually the favorite out of every video this is our overall forecast map now what this does is this gives you a basic summary of what your weather will likely be like overall for your winter season so we're going to start up there for the pacific northwest in that green region you can see the little raindrops that means cool and wet so this doesn't mean you're just going to see rain up here, but precipitation wise, rainfall usually means wet. So I kind of chose that as the theme there. Um, but basically cool and wet conditions, you, it's kind of self-explanatory. Cooler weather and more wet weather. That's overall what you're expecting to see this winter season. Now for the white area there, you can see this surrounds a lot of the mountains up in the Pacific Northwest and down through the Rockies. We are expecting mountain snow. So this is pretty typical for every year, but this is what I put for this region. Not too many people live in those higher elevations, but overall here, this is expecting mountain snow and pretty active mountain snow at that for those areas in that white portion there up in the Pacific Northwest. Now moving to the south, we do see those mountains in the southern part of the Rockies and the Sierra Nevadas we do see decreased snowfall. Now this doesn't mean you're gonna have crazy less amounts of snowfall, but I do believe with the warmer temperatures coupled with that drier pattern, I do believe we will see some slightly decreased snowfall. So for any ski resorts down here, that doesn't mean you're likely gonna be without a season, but your season might be a little bit impacted with that less snowfall moving through those areas and those conditions to create that snowfall. Now, warmer and drier here for the south, we do see for that yellow region there, this extends from the southwestern United States all the way to the southeastern United States. And it's pretty self-explanatory, warmer weather and drier weather overall. Basically, that's gonna be much of your season. Now, moving on to that green region up there, we do see occasional storms. And basically what that means is you're likely to see some occasional activity with winter storms moving through this area. Now, it's gonna be pretty sparse, I do believe, I think, more of the storms are going to be more northward. I do expect a little bit of ridging in the central United States, so that might keep those storms a little more northward up into Canada. But I do believe that around this area, we may see some occasional development with some troughs and dipping there that may fuel those winter storms move through those areas once in a while. Now, just south of there, we see that orange warmer area. This is a pretty small region, but here you can expect some pretty warmer conditions for your season. Really nothing else with that. That doesn't mean you're not going to see a winter at all. That doesn't mean you're not going to see any snowfall. But I do believe for this area, you likely will see some warmer conditions overall for your winter season now moving up north there we see that big purple area called arctic air this is pretty self-explanatory pretty cool conditions this season so definitely some powerful cold fronts are going to move through this area i do believe and we're going to see some pretty uh dense arctic air masses move through this area as well keeping things pretty chilly up there uh often in the negatives and i do believe this is going to be a pretty cold winter for this area now moving to the east we see that light blue region there winter storms basically again this is pretty self-explanatory we do have pretty active winter storms moving through this area i do believe this is going to be a pretty active storm track here for much of the great lakes we're going to see a lot of that moisture a lot of that warmer air kicking up that moisture and then along with the cooler air masses moving through i believe this is going to fuel our winter storms keeping this convective process going and i do believe we're going to see pretty frequent winter storms moving through this area now onto the red region there next to it the lake effect regions this is basically going to tell you that you're having lake effect snow like every season, but I do believe this year it's going to be a little more active than years in the past. Now, we have had some pretty active seasons so far, even in El Nino, but I do believe this year we're going to see some pretty active patterns coming through now that we have that even more cooler air coming down from the Arctic zone, and I do believe we're going to have some pretty active lake effect snowfall for these areas. Now, moving on to the south there, we see that dark blue region called occasional snowfall, and this doesn't mean you're not going to see any snowfall throughout the season, but as it states, pretty occasional. So I do believe more of the storms are going to be up north, and I believe a lot of this area might see more mixed precipitation and overall less snowfall and less storm activity overall, rather than seeing more of those snowstorms move through. 
I do believe that at times, much like the occasional storms region to its west, I do believe we will still see some storms move through here, and at times they could be pretty large storms, but I don't believe it's going to be as active as to the north. Now to the south, we see that in between, which means you're kind of going to flip-flop between these two regions, to the north and the south. So we may see some warmer and drier conditions at times, or we could also see some cooler and wetter conditions at times. So pretty much average, I'd say, but we will likely see that bouncing back and forth. It's going to be a pretty turbulent region and kind of a harder area to predict between those two regions uh, as they're kind of fighting back and forth. Now to the southwest there, we do see that red region, that red circle rather, from Louisiana all the way up into Alabama and Tennessee. This is our severe weather late region. Now, the reason it says late is because I don't expect we're going to have any severe weather uh, earlier on. Again, we're expecting warmer and drier conditions, really not good for storm development. The warmer part isn't the factor that's going to hinder this, but the drier conditions overall are likely going to hinder storm development for this area. Now, as we head towards spring, probably around February to March, and then heading earlier in the spring, we're going to likely see that storm development start to kick back up. And I do believe this is our area of interest for any severe weather that's going to likely happen this season down in the southeast. Now, up there to the northeast, we do see that purple region called mixed types and this is basically stating that rather than snowfall I do believe this area is going to have a lot of rain and mixed precipitation maybe even some freezing rain conditions now this is due to us having some warmer layers in the upper levels of the atmosphere again that warmer ocean air is likely going to hinder snowfall development now we likely will have cooler surface temperatures so maybe around freezing or just above freezing which means that once we have that rainfall up above in the upper levels of the atmosphere once it falls to the ground it's likely going to either freeze or it's going to be a little bit more chillier so that could create some ice some freezing rain conditions or overall mixed precipitation depending on how cold it gets towards the surface but overall i do believe we're going to have some mixed types of precipitation you could see some snowfall could see some rain could see some mixed sleet and or freezing rain but I think overall it's going to be pretty diverse in precipitation patterns. Now moving on to our final region just north of there, we do see snowy. Now this is a pretty self-explanatory region, pretty snowy here, okay? I do believe that winter storms region is going to continue pushing those winter storms to the east, and rather than pushing those winter storms to the south towards portions of Massachusetts, I do believe that's going to be up north in northern New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, and I do believe a lot of these areas are going to be pretty active in snowfall. Typically, each season, we do see a lot of snowfall for these areas. I don't believe that's going to be any less this season. I do believe we're going to see pretty normal snowfall, if not slightly above average for these areas. And I do believe that it's going to be pretty snowy for these locations. All right, I want to thank you all so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy the forecast, I would ask you to consider subscribing for more use forecasts free of charge. And I would also ask you to consider following the Weather at a Glance official Facebook page for more inside information and complimentary personal forecasts when you message me over on my Facebook page. I also want to mention our channel members, Chris Betty. Thank you so much for keeping the channel going. And with that, I will see you in the next video.